It'll pass. That took a great deal of power. Just don't faint on me. <laughs> now, in your firm embrace, not in your life. Hmm. <laughs> Love to be able to say we could stay here a while and rest. I know. I know. We must go on. Block the passage. Maybe I can try. Leave it to me. Despite the fact that our characters are spending a lot of time standing around and talking, I figure there's supposed to be some kind of strong imperative pushing us forward. The Wild Hunt is here, and they're searching after the elf that we're trying to get to in order to get the information on Siri. Now, we saw them almost as soon as we arrived, but there was a lot of time spent with our characters wandering around, talking about rats, doing this, that, and the other thing. And it was really only until we ran into the portals full of snow shooting through that we felt like there was anything really pushing us forward with any sort of uh, haste. And I guess you kind of have to do something like that because the reality is that you're not really going to be able to sustain a high-energy scene for the 20 minutes, half an hour or so that we were actually doing it here, we're actually playing the game. It's a mistake that I see sometimes a lot, especially with um, amateurish fiction writers, which also in movies and shit, where they attempt to push the action moving forward as fast as they can for as long as they can. They're like, this happens, and then this happens, and this happens, and this helicopter comes by and it starts shooting missiles, and this guy dives out of the way and lands in the ocean, and then a dolphin comes up, and he jumps springboards off the back of the dolphin and swings through the air and cuts the blades off the helicopter, and shit like that. Not only was that absurd, it was all happening at such a pace and all that that no matter how exciting it seems... The longer it goes on, the more it starts to get boring, and it's not necessarily because what you're seeing is boring, but it starts to tire the reader, viewer, player, whatever. You have to calm down a little bit. So I'm going to give them a pass for <coughs> allowing this to drag out. He awaits us. You're stubborn, Dwan. Geralt, I, I shall help you. Step back. Stop telling me what to do. I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, but he's one of the elves in the Wild Hunt. This is the first time we're having any sort of direct contact between Geralt and the Wild Hunt. I mean, they chased him down as he was leaving White Orchard, but he never engaged one of them. And the what we had seen in the first episode was just a dream, and the other encounter where there was a flashback we had seen him was just a flashback. So this is the first time actually encountering one proper, fighting one. And, well, he's a tough fella, and I don't know how many elves are supposed to be in the Wild Hunt. Oh, that was a mistake. How many elves are supposed to be in the Wild Hunt, but it seems like uh, more than a few. So if this one guy is supposed to be this big of a threat, how big is all, how are the rest of them supposed to be if we're fighting the entire, the entire, uh, I don't know, army? Is there, is there an army of them? I don't even know how many there are. I guess maybe they sort of had to go in. I don't know if Kira is invincible right here. She seems like she is. One of those wolves attacked her and I didn't see anything relating to a reduction in her health or anything like that. So this, unless we're talking about very specific circumstances like we've seen in the last episode where you, she was shutting down the portals and we had to guard her while that was happening, it seems like any companions you're going to have are simply not going to have a health pool to get reduced and then have them die. 
I guess that's a good thing because, well, you don't want to be stuck in a friggin' uh, through any extended period of time, an escort quest. Because I see it's entirely possible that if Kira could have died during this wandering in the dark mission, the whole mission would be a pain in the ass because you had to protect her the entire time. Nobody likes that shit. So they essentially made her invincible, and she's actually going to win this fight for me. Look at this. <laughs> He's not even reacting to her. <laughs> He's taking the hits, but he doesn't even seem to notice her. <laughs> anyway, there are other games that are fairly recent. I mean, I guess not that recent if I'm going to talk about The Last of Us. Where you had a companion who, I guess, could die... Or you, let's say, um, Resident Evil 4, you had Ashley follow you around, and Ashley could die or she could be carried off or all that kind of stuff. But having to protect the companion is rarely fun, at least for any extended period of time. So doing something like this is probably, probably the better way to go about it. Although it does get a little bit frustrating to hear people talk about it and people to over-attribute what it is for how good it's supposed to be. Like, I knew somebody who once was talking about, um, oh, Bioshock Infinite. Bioshock Infinite had, I've forgotten her name, it'll occur to me later, but the female companion of Booker that followed him around. And he was talking about how that was the best, um, AI when it came to a companion because she never got into trouble or anything like that. Of course, the solution to that wasn't really strong AI or a companion character which was capable of defending herself or taking care of herself or anything like that. The reality of what was happening in that game was simply that the enemies don't even know she exists. They don't react to her. They don't shoot at her. She has no bearing on the way they act or what they do. Everybody always just targets Booker. So it's, it's well designed in the sense that it gave this guy the delusion that that it was impressive AI design, but was really very simple. This took a little bit of a different approach in that Kira is here and she does occasionally get attacked, but it seems like she is never going to die. She could take a hit and not, uh, and not uh, go down. And she actually participates in the fight. She does damage to this guy. Although it does seem like that if he is focusing on her, he'll block every attack that she does, so neither of them are going to damage each other. When the asshole glitches out and he faces Geralt, even though Geralt isn't anywhere near him or attacking him, she seems to be able to land multiple hits on him successively and do significant damage. So it's a flaw in the AI design there, but, you know, can't win them all, can you? Unnecessarily. Let's look around. If I have my knickers on straight, this looks like the elves' laboratory. This message. Sira, this place is no longer safe. Do not tarry here long. Trust no one. And above all, beware the witches of Crookback Bog. Try to reach the place where last we were together. We were together. Not much to go on. Damn it. Perhaps it's best he didn't leave a clearer message. The Wild Hunt broke in here. Surely they saw the projection. They searched everything. And if they had more time, they'd probably have torn the place to the ground. But that doesn't change the fact that we haven't learned anything. Not about the Elf, not about Ciri. Well, we know they were well acquainted and traveling together. Wonder why they split up. Perhaps because the Wild Hunt was on the Elf's trail, and Ciri would be safer if they did. The witches of Crookback Swamp. Crookback Bog. 
Kira, if you're hiding something. But... I didn't say... You know these witches? I've never met them, but I've read of them. In an old manuscript I found in one of the huts in the village. It mentions the village witches venturing into Crookback Bog at times, to liaise between the villagers and the crones, the ladies of the wood. The crones appear to be intolerant of outsiders, but they help the local folk. Apparently, they stop the spread of the plague in Velen. Hmm. What's your take on this? I'd love to shrug it off as the nattering of so many old women, yet... Throughout my first fortnight in Velen, I had horrible nightmares. Something was calling me out into the swamps. One night, I decided to enter the dream consciously. Render it lucid. I confronted the thing directly. It broke contact at once. Peaceful nights ever since. Why didn't you say anything earlier? I told you Siri had a run-in with a witch. Well, I had no idea you meant them. If I'd told you something, you would have rushed off to find them. But we needed first to confirm that Siri was here, didn't we? I shall tell you everything now, of course. Now? After I safely led you through the cave? I can't believe you'd think so poorly of me. Perhaps you do bear a grudge against sorceresses. Mm-hmm. Can't imagine where that comes from. How do I find them? The swamps are vast. Dangerous. But they say the crones mark the way for peasants who wish to visit them. The manuscript mentions a chapel in Crookback Bog. And from that chapel, one must follow a trail of treats. Treats? Of course. They didn't read you bedtime stories at Kaer Morhen. All normal folk know that witches live in gingerbread houses poised atop chicken legs. I'll have to see that to believe it. Take the tome and read it. I... I truly do believe you'll find your Cirilla. All right then. As a start, let's look for a way out of here. Good idea. Why do we even come? Hmm. Mysterious mage herbalist. Kira does have a point there that they needed to confirm that Siri was actually here. Although I'm not entirely convinced that was the reason why she wanted to get through here. There was something else that she wanted to come here for, and that was the reason why. So, she's a little bit untrustworthy, a little bit self-centered. But, you know, she's only human. It's an illusion. I sensed it as well. I expected we might run into such things, so I brought this. Meaning what? The Eye of Nahalani. It dispels illusions. It's easy enough to build, so you're welcome to this one. It's bound to come in handy. And each time it does, you will think of me. Huh. Thanks. Oh, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Let's see where the passage leads. Do you feel that? A flow of fresh air from the left must be an exit that way. Good. Let's get out of here. Wait, there's still the magic lamp. The magic what now? Lamp. The elf promised it to me in exchange for my help. And since his return here seems doubtful, I must retrieve it myself. If I can find it, that is. Will you help? Yeah, I'll help. Splendid. Come then. Gavella Glad. We're certain to find something here. That little magical trinket that Kira gave Geralt is probably the gating device. Although I, I don't quite remember, it was a few years ago that I played this game before. I would assume that that device is the gating device, which prevents Geralt from progressing too far along 
in the story without having done this mission first. You get this far into the place where you can't retreat out of it, and then at some point along here you get the thing that allows you to progress further on in the story. Because otherwise it feels like the whole Kira part here is a little bit unnecessary to the overall story of the game. She gives you information, but this is all information that you could stumble upon later on if you just sort of went to the appropriate areas. The information about the witches of Crookback Bog, for example, you could just wander in the Crookback Bog and find those witches. Or, by contrast, or alternative means, you could have gone and seen the Bloody Baron, which is something that we've already gotten information on. I could have gone there instead of to Midcops and picked up this whole Kira mission. So the Crookback Bog thing is definitely an important thing when it comes to the story, the progression of the game. So, I mean, if the only thing that came out of this was just information on that, then this would have been unnecessary. But she gave me a little trinket that lets me get through doors, so it became necessary. Whose grave is it? What do you think? No inscription, sadly. Hmm. Sign of the girl. I didn't already know where she was buried. I guess this is Laura Doran's sepulchre. Perhaps it's a monument to her. Can't see the elves commemorating her this way. Heroine of a tragic legend to some, but... Most see her as a traitor to her race, who got her just desserts for marrying Gregenon of Lord. Perhaps the elven mage is Lara's kin. It would explain why he's helping Ciri. Possible. This what you're looking for? Uh-huh. So what's it supposed to do? Hmm. You will be able to activate it. Let's leave this place, shall we? Of course, now that Kira has what she was after, she... Oh, by the way, she said no inscription, sadly. There's an inscription all over the face of that damn thing. No idea what it says, but there's clearly an inscription there. Oh, anyway, once she... Hey, somebody lit a, somebody lit a big pyre here. And a place of power. How convenient. I guess to give you a reward as you were leaving. Once she got the magical trinket that she was after, that magic lamp, she's all too willing to leave now, isn't she? Yeah, there's a, another damn. golem up there. Gotta go kill that damn thing, don't we? I'm gonna speed things up just to get out of here quicker. As always, in these kinds of games, you're gonna wanna explore around a little bit, because there's almost always going to be something worth finding if you travel off the beaten path a little bit. So we go this direction instead of the other direction, and then we go and we find all these extra little items. One enemy we have to fight, but overall it's worth it. I'm here. The artifact Kira gave me. Ah, oh, at last. But it was worth it, right? You learned something about Ciri in the end. Something important. Do you intend to venture into Crookback Bog? You must tell me about it afterwards. Don't know that I'll get the chance. Geralt, there are two types of men. Those who see opportunity and take advantage, and those who forge the opportunities themselves. I've always seen you as an example of the latter. Besides, I've a favour to ask you. So... Visit me sometime? I'll stop by. You can be sure. In that case, I shall be waiting. See ya, Kira. Alright, so that is the end of this part of the storyline, necessary parts of Kira's involvement in the story. Now, she does have some side quests, which I will be doing, but not in the next episode. The next one, I'm going to travel north 
to Novigrad and explore that city. No storyline stuff, though. I'm Ibea Hattori, former master swordsmith. Currently, a master of dumplings. Looking for a good swordsmith? No one? <laughs> Three swords on your back. A bit much, don't you think? Good one. But all jests aside, you make swords anymore? <laughs> 